Were you able to hear that? It sounds like Croy Bierman told Kim Zosiak, his wife, now the whole world's gonna effing know, or now the world's gonna effing know. It's easier to hear Croy's voice instead of Kim's voice. You might hear Kim screaming or hollering. It's a video from far away, and it was before Thanksgiving, right before Thanksgiving, and obviously the beleaguered couple was fighting loudly enough for their neighbors to take notice, even though they have all that property and all that acreage they were outside their home once again screaming and of course the cops were called again that night apparently their neighbors around the manor in georgia are worried enough that this divorce could turn into a true crime situation the cops showed up but not because neighbors called i believe it's because one of the children called unfortunately and what is the whole world gonna know what is croy talking about i keep wondering what more secrets could be divulged from this couple beyond what has already been divulged. Let me let you listen to that clip one more time and see what you hear. So that was an extremely loud fight. One of the kids called the cops. I've already put in my request for the body cam footage from that night. I put it in two weeks ago. I still need to pay the $243 for the footage because there's so much they have to redact. I'm waiting for a different police department, Port St. Lucie in Florida to refund me. I should have the check today, I hope in Jesus name, so I can deposit that and pay Georgia police for this Kim and Croy body cam footage. There should be a lot of it because according to TMZ, three police officers plus a supervisor showed up that night to try and calm things down and no one was arrested. I don't know how long they stayed there, but that's at least four body cam videos and perhaps even four dash cam videos. A lot of footage. Stay tuned because cops told me it should take 30 plus business days in order to redact all of that footage. In the meantime, let's talk about how this marriage gone bad has turned into true crime body cam fodder because the police keep getting summoned to this home. Did you just see that? Did you just see Guys, that? here's the thing. He's being ridiculous, and you know he's being petty. Right? Get out of my face. Out of my car. This is my vehicle. It's and not other your vehicle. It is. It's in listen. my name, Embryo. You should listen. Get it's out. a joint Get marital out. asset. Sir, like Guys, it's, it's a joint marital asset. We're on, we're on the verge of like creating a situation we don't need to. Yeah. And if I had to arrest one of you right now in front of your kids, that would, that would be the worst thing would. for me. Yeah and how some people even think it might be an act. Is it a bid for a new reality show play? Kim and Croy's attempts to get a contract somewhere? Is it an attempt, a sad attempt by Kim and Croy to get a new reality TV show or something? Are they putting on a show for the police worn body cameras and random iPhone holders strolling by? So I'm asking you guys, stop provoking. I'm not, I'm not sure. you're, I don't think I am. I am calm. Well, you're you're Are bordering. You I'll be honest with you. Are you're you bordering. kidding me, dude? You're, you're bordering. Because I, I if have, you want to see what all she's taking, that's right. fine. I have every right to do what I'm You doing stole the stuff. I didn't take any of your stuff. You stole my stuff. I didn't take any of your is that stuff. The last? I don't care. I'll make more of it. It's fine. Take it. Whatever. Kim, is that the last one right there? What uh, else you got? Looks like you don't care. Yeah, I just got to get a water. And, um... Kim, just try to, I know he's trying to provoke you, I got it. You also got a wallet right there behind you or something. Oh, thank you. Here's the deal. I know he's trying to provoke you for some reason. Yeah. So, okay. But just keep in mind, the kids are watching too, okay? Uh, are they outside right there? They're all outside. I didn't see them all, all right. right. 
So if you would, if you can, don't engage with him. Let him do what he's saying or whatever, and just get your stuff and and let's go. If you need us later on tonight when you come back, give us a call. I'm very afraid we're gonna do what I'm calling. We'll be here. Huh? I'm very afraid what he's gonna do when I'm calling too much stuff. Like I think that's crazy. But... Well, here's here's what I would do. If it were me. I'm not an attorney. I can't offer you legal advice. But if it were me, just like he's doing. When you come back, or now, right now. Do walk right now. around with your phone and like, video. Do I have two phones? You know why? Because I can't call 911 because it takes my phone every time. Which the officer told me that when you do that's that, a that's crime a crime too. He told me yep. that's a crime, uh, whatever day. But we have to be able to prove it sometimes. He has to be able to admit it. All the my house, why? 55 cameras. He did say that. Yeah. Why? Why? You want to know why? You want me to tell you why? The real sure. reason why? I'm sure. Like, I'm not playing with you. I'm being so fucking serious. So, if you wanted to walk around and, and do that, don't get in his face. Don't do what he's doing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it before it happens, well, I, I guess. I need to get a water real quick. And I'm just no worries. Picture and he's getting if you take a video of what's in your yeah, closet, that way you know what's there when you return. Yeah. Or is this more legit and sad, like I think of it, especially when I think of all their children witnessing this? Is it just us watching the crumbling, the demise of a marriage, which we hope does not turn into a disaster? It seems like one minute Kim and Croy are just on and off, hot and cold. They're at an Italian restaurant in love, celebrating their 12th anniversary of their wedding. Or they're at a hibachi and Kim is talking about how she doesn't eat meat or something. Why don't you do that, Croy? I do. You do? Just no. not when you're around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you, man. Chicken, I do sometimes, but uh, yeah. I like veggies more. I just don't like it. Okay. What about you, man? Uh, yeah, I like yeah, meat. You know, you love I like meat. meat. Go I see it, man. I see it. How cute, guys. Yeah. You're so cute. <laughs> I deep fried this turkey. Crazy. Croy really um, killed it this year. The funny part, first of all, I'm not a fan. I am. Cash and Croy at like this. Me? I can eat that. I can eat it. I can eat it. Of course you can. Okay guys, I have this amazing china that I've had for, I don't even know, probably 15 years. I've never once used it. Actually, I think I did one Thanksgiving, mine and Corey's first Thanksgiving together. Never used it again. I don't know why, I just wanna look at it. This whole thing lights up and I love it. Guys, who likes this? Look at this, it's shaped. Like the can. No. I, who likes this? Please tell me. Oof. Way better. The next minute, they're screaming at the top of their lungs on body cam videos or on random iPhone videos where neighbors can hear them. Huh. Well, if you're taking that, if you're worried about the kids, then maybe you should, um... Uh, maybe Hello? You should probably be watching our kids instead of dealing with Hello? Stuff. No, I'm tired of you taking all my personal belongings okay. over and over and over. All the time. My very expensive handbags are gone. My collector ones that I love so much. You just do this stuff and then act like you're like, oh yeah. yeah. Why don't you show them who you really are? Should I play the recording for Some education. Tonight? You sure? Go ahead. I don't. I have nothing to hide. Oh, oh. I got nothing to hide. Huh? Hey guys. Yeah. Hey this. This is not going to be productive for you guys. So it like it doesn't matter. Get out of here. You can that you cannot. I mean, so. Miss Kim, you say once you get your stuff, you're leaving for the night. Is what you're saying? I don't know if I'm leaving for the night. I haven't been with my neighbors. And okay. Well, I here's I just don't look. You guys, you guys are like famous, okay? You need to listen. These just are, just hear me out for a quick second. Tell me what you you do. I, I'm listen. listening to him. I'm not listening to you. If you, you would just, listen. if you would just, because here's the deal. You guys are upset, angry, I, and I know why. I get it on both sides. I really do get it. I've been there. I was married for 17 years myself. I didn't have to deal with. But here's the thing. If you any, Jim, you need to listen. I crazy. But here's the thing. If a report come out or any two of you went to jail, or whatever, TMZ would be the first thing all over that. Y'all don't want that. Y'all don't need that. Forget so if you can do amicably, that would be great. But here's the deal. This is not if him. you come back tonight and you come with a locksmith or whatever, yes. call us back, okay? Because here's the deal. I can't say.
say, if he wants to physically stand in front of that safe and say, nobody's taking it, I can't make him move. I can't. So it's going to be an issue. But if you have a lawyer and he has a lawyer, then that's where it gets solved peacefully. You just need to stop. So, this is ridiculous. But whatever. It's my stop back test. Stop you taking my belongings. You all of your you belongings. You took all of my purses Tim, just now. joint marital They're assets. They're not. They're not. Okay. It's okay. An officer okay. just, he worked for the, the go. you need go. to understand go. these are joint marital assets. You're doing assets. it to punish me. You're doing it to sell them. You're doing all of that. These At, persons no. are not from you. Just the great ones from, you. from Lee. Some of them are from Miss Kim, it's okay. It, we're not we're not concerned about that. If, unless you're alleging that there was a crime that was committed, then that's not concerning us now. And I understand. And I get it. I do. I understand. I just want to be here to help you get your stuff. You understand something that literally in real life, that if you take somebody's belongings, like these are, some of these are sentimental to me and very expensive, and they're from prior to him, like you said with the receipt. Right. Why are you taking my purses? You're doing it to be fucking petty. Like, that's what he's doing. I and mean, you know that, and I know that. Well, I can't... It's yeah. not worth that. Like, it's not worth it. You can keep the mother... Keep it all. Just keep the... Whatever. Well, for, for whatever reason, he's he is so choosing to do that. that. So, at least you know... At least you know what you need to do to protect the rest of the things that you say. Now, if you need to catch up and you haven't been following this story, just check the links below for the full podcast and watch all the body cam videos that police would release to me and the 911 calls thus far until we get this next set of body cam video footage. So find all those links below. Now, Kim is 45 and Croy is 38 years old. They've been married for 12 years and Kim, rightly so, seems desperate to make money. People have been put off by the way Kim has been using Instagram to post these clickbait type posts where one of them had people thinking Kim was about to become a grandmother. It was this sonogram, like I can't wait to be a grandmother or something like that. They thought Brielle, Kim's daughter, was pregnant. You click through and it's nothing. It's just some kind of video. TMZ did confirm that Kim is getting paid to post stuff like that. And there was another one where people were thinking, oh, is Kim herself pregnant? But no, she's just trying to get paid. Back at it, guys. Back at it. Basketball. I hope Kim is getting paid enough to pay off this debt. That seems to be at the heart, at least one of the main problems, of her and Croy's marital problems. And Kim is still turning to Instagram to sell off designer shoes and purses and all this stuff, which I can't believe costs so much to begin with. And she has the proof on some of these purses. Never carried. Something that's like $6,500. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> in my world, I'm like, that could go towards a car or Lots of talk about this bag. You guys, how this is working is you just Zell. I'll send you a DM. You Zell, and then I ship it out basically that day. Um, this is better pictures of the bag. It's in perfect condition. Only been carried a couple times. Has the authenticity card and the bag with it. It's pretty cool. This adorable Louis Vuitton oversized bag. Great for travel. Excellent condition. This adorable Jivon shoe bag. So cute. I will show you guys the inside as well. Brand new. And then this one as well was not carried. This was pretty high up in my closet with the other one. Um, so it is brand new, never used. She's adorable. This is an oversized Chanel bag. The material is really, really cool. It's awesome for travel as well. used one time men's valentino perfect condition these are really cute all the shoes you guys are a size 13 by the way i should have probably put that down but these are Givenchy sneakers excellent condition this is an italian brand this is a really cute sneaker excellent condition of course i don't think he wore these This is an oversized Chanel bag. The CC one's gray, one's cream, patent leather. So adorable, excellent, excellent condition. This is a brand new Prada Python on the side. Cutest bag ever, I've never carried it. Still has all the original 
packing inside of it. Perfect condition. I'm selling this Chanel bag. She is brand new, never carried. Here's inside the bag. I'm selling her for exactly what I paid. Men's Louboutin size 13. Perfect condition, of course. I don't even think I ever wore these. These are Gucci slides, you guys, only worn a couple times. This is a Python Chanel boy bag, the large version. In perfect condition, it was carried one time. They stopped making any kind of snakeskin bags a few years back. I would say medium size Balenciaga tote. Adorable, excellent condition. Okay, guys, I'm back in action and back home. Woohoo! We're getting back to it. These are brand new, never worn. Adorable. These are mink. The balls on the end is so cute. Gucci shoes. Um, obviously, perfect condition. Adorable. I don't know. I guess I'm just not a real purse person, but would Kim and Croy be going this far to try and stage some type of fake reality show, hoping that Andy Cohen will give Kim another peach and bring her back full time to the Real Housewives of Atlanta? Or are Kim and Croy hoping they'll get another spinoff show on Bravo? Maybe they could call it The Ring Didn't Mean a Thing, since they like to name the shows after Kim's songs, apparently. Would viewers watch that type of conscious uncoupling? Maybe they would the way these body cam videos are being watched but it's sad to think of Kim and Croy doing this for ratings it would almost be better if they were if they were just putting on a show wasting the time of the police and the court and then going back inside and saying okay kids the scene is over mommy and daddy are really in love that would be almost better than what I think it is just reality crumbling down a marriage falling apart. I see people leaving comments saying, Croy should have listened to his parents and never married her in the first place. Or some of you say, well, Croy, why can't he get out there and get some type of job like a sports commentator? You know how those retired NFL guys do. They can prolong their careers and get out there and still make money. Croy has claimed Kim has gambled away $1.5 million during the course of their marriage through online gambling and probably through casinos as well. We I know Kim's daughter, I believe it was Brielle, had posted on Twitter once that her mom had her waiting in the car outside a casino somewhere for two hours while Kim was inside gambling. Now that's pretty sad. That sounds like Kim probably really needs Gamblers Anonymous, something to help get to the root of the problem. They say that women, especially who shop a lot or perhaps even gamble, sometimes are, you know, there's a deep longing, there's a deep problem, they're not satisfied in their marriage, and I'm sure it works vice versa for men too who gamble, whatever that deep-seated root, that need is. Is, that needs to be addressed, I hope it can be addressed. But thankfully, there has been movement in the divorce case of the couple. It's like the court is forcing movement in this divorce case. Now, first, Croy filed for divorce. It was back on May 8th, 2023. That divorce was contested, but that case is closed. Then, on August 24th, 2023, Croy filed again for divorce. That's still open, and that's a contested divorce. But on December 4th, 2023, Croy's lawyer filed a motion, a notice of unpaid legal fees. Attorney Marlies A. Bergstrom from the law firm of Stearns, Montgomery, and Proctor filed that notice saying that Croy owed $801.01. Now, some people are marveling at the fact what they consider a small amount. $801.01 has not been paid by Croy yet just to pay his attorney. And there's interest accumulating as the debt goes unpaid. I guess that's how it goes, you know, whether you make a lot of money or not that much money. I know debt can look overwhelming, but God can bring miracles. It can be paid off. We don't know how it will get paid off. Ironically, in this case, neither Croy nor Kim has filed bankruptcy yet, which you would have expected by this point. Now, this attorney Bergstrom is the same attorney who said 
Back on Friday, September 15th, my guess is that Kim's grand plan is to file for bankruptcy. I mean, it would make sense because Kim and Croy are drowning in a sea of debt. There's creditors galore if you look up the Fulton County paperwork, and that's not even counting what they owe the IRS. It's amazing to see owing over a million dollars, debt since 2018, all these different stores in Saks Fifth Avenue and all these other stores owed so much money. Of course, while Croy is blaming Kim for her gambling habit, Kim is blaming Croy for not working for the past seven years since his NFL career ended. She mentioned that over and over again throughout the body cam video. It is weird, despite all this huge waves of debt, neither of them have filed for bankruptcy. So months ago, Croy's attorney explained that if Kim were to file for bankruptcy, quote, a stay would be put on the foreclosure, and again, the parties would be forced to live together, enveloped by all that toxicity for God knows how long. So even though Kim did not file for bankruptcy, it appears that the house is still for sale for $6 million. I haven't seen the results again of the auction. I don't know if anyone will pony up the $6 million to try and save this couple from themselves. And that toxicity that they talked about living together, even though Kim is living in the nanny suite in the basement and Croy has the master bedroom, they still do have some shared areas like the kitchen and whatnot. And of course, it appears they're not keeping their distance because voila, that fight right before Thanksgiving so loud. Maybe they thought if they were outside, the kids wouldn't hear them, but it sounds like the entire neighborhood could hear them the way they were yelling. Back then, attorney Bergstrom said that they would file an objection to such a request. I guess file an objection not to a bankruptcy, but putting a stay on the foreclosure. But the attorney added that Kim and Croy would likely come out with almost nothing if their house was forced into foreclosure. It sounds like everything that can be done to avoid foreclosure on that $6 million mansion would be a good thing for the couple. If they get anywhere near their asking price on this home, would it be enough to take care of all their debts and the taxes and give anything left to both of them to just move on and move into different locations and get divorced and just co-parent calmly and without all this brouhaha? Well, as of this filming, it appears the seven bedroom and 11 bathrooms, as Kim likes to say, their home is still listed as for sale for $6 million, but maybe they haven't had any takers. Maybe people are waiting until it's a bargain basement low price before they buy it. But no wonder just yesterday, December 11th, 2023, the judge issued an order to force this couple into divorce mediation. The Honorable Sharmella J. Williams created an order directing the parties to mediation before January 31st, 2024. And maybe that's one reason Kim hasn't filed for bankruptcy yet. You know, Croy calls her self-absorbed. We know she's very house proud. You know, if you watched her on Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know, a lot of people, they like to have friends over, sometimes especially women. Sometimes men do, of course. They like to brag and show off their beautiful homes, but it's really not much of a brag if you can't afford to live there and if you're just spending money like water, like Andy Cohen used to say, it worried him the way Kim spent her money. It's got to be pretty embarrassing to file for bankruptcy, have all the numbers there in black and white. You know, you can see it. I looked on Pacer. I didn't see anything under Kim and Croy's name, but you know, in case I've missed something, I don't think they filed for bankruptcy yet, but it's embarrassing. Maybe it's a pride thing for the quote, self-absorbed Kim who keeps saying, whatever, I can make the money back just like that. Or a woman who tried to deny or lessen her money woes, her financial problems. Maybe she equates it with any kind of poverty she grew up in. I don't really truly know her backstory, but Croy on the body cam footage talked about just Kim having this trauma from her past and all these things that need to be healed. And usually sometimes when you find a person who's trying to make up for some self-perceived or unperceived lack or insecurity, sometimes they try and fill it with a lot of designer clothes, a lot of designer purses, and you know, the type of people who brag about their material things. That 
that seems like Kim. And of course we can't let Croy off the hook. Some people are saying, well, he should have put his foot down years ago. I know it's difficult being in a marriage and trying to match the financial personalities can always be quite a task. Maybe it's a real spender married to a real saver or they're both spenders. Croy was one who liked posing in those photos in front of the fancy cars and with his beautiful wife. And so he got all the trappings of success. He enjoyed the accoutrements too. And sometimes, you know, you try and put your foot down or you, you don't ask enough questions. You let it go on too long. And when Croy tried to put his foot down by taking the things out of the house he needed to try and sell to pay his own attorney. That's when the explosive body cam footage happened because Kim, if she's so attached to her things and maybe things to her represent love and of course comfort and security and I can understand that to an extent. We all love our homes. We love being cozy and warm and in bed and you know the comforts of home I understand but it can get excessive like one of the members i just replied to she said oh my goodness look at all that stuff in that house and i was thinking yeah i couldn't believe all the wigs and the bags and imagine how much stuff we didn't see on that body cam footage there's probably stuff hidden in rooms and closets and you know shoes stacked up to the ceiling and everything there comes a point you ask yourself how much stuff do you need you really can't take it with you to heaven what's it going to matter like that popular saying i've never seen a hearse driving a U-Haul. When we all take our last breath, does it matter if we ever owned a Prada bag or not and how many we owned and, you know, stuff that doesn't matter for naught but a hill of beans. So are Kim and Croy getting it together enough to go through this divorce mediation? Are they gonna have it all together by January 31st, 2024? In Georgia, divorce mediation means a divorcing couple trying to come together, settle a dispute without having to go through a trial. And the court can choose a mediator or the couple can decide for themselves. It's where some third party will come in and hopefully reduce the cost of, you know, back and forth fighting. You guys probably know how nasty divorces can get and how paid the lawyers can get. You know, you've seen it where it's kind of like the wife is amped up and the husband's amped up and the lawyers are telling them different things. Oh, she's going to take all your money and he's going to try not to give you enough and they can drag on for years. Whereas if you can get a couple who agree enough to say, well, we don't want to be together, but we will choose a mediator. Look, you take this stuff. I'll take that stuff. We agree on this type of uh, alimony or none at all or these are the child support conditions and arrangements it can go a lot quicker and be a lot more amicable than those divorces that just get like the war of the roses which is what another person commented that's what this reminds them of that movie the war of the roses going through this divorce with kim and croy now kim and croy's order directing the parties to mediation it's a civil action filed the other day december 11th ordering these parties Kim and Croy to mediation. The case came before the court September 29th, 2023 for a 30-day status hearing. And it says, as there are numerous unresolved issues based upon review of the record and applicable authority, the court finds that the party's interests and the orderly management of the court's docket would be served by referring the above styled case to mediation. So basically, there's not enough progress. There's a lot of outstanding issues. So it is hereby ordered that the parties are directed to submit instanter the matters remaining at issue. I had to look up that instanter word. It's an adverb that means immediately, instantly, or without delay. And in law, it means to plead the same day or within 24 hours. I don't know if they needed to come up with the remaining matters at issue, a list or something ASAP. It says in the above styled case to mediation as provided by and through the Fulton County Alternate Dispute resolution program. Accordingly, the parties are directed to complete mediation by January 31st, 2024. Both parties must attend the mediation session. Each party shall bring to the mediation a completed and updated domestic relations financial affidavit in compliance with Uniform Superior Court Rule 24.4. And number two, all documents sought 
by any notice to produce that has been served at least 10 days prior to the mediation session. The parties shall arrange for mediation to be completed through the Fulton County Alternative Dispute Resolution Program by contacting the Fulton County Alternative Dispute Resolution Program, and they tell you where it's located, and the parties shall split the associated costs. So at least the judge is lighting a fire under their butts to get this resolved somehow. They're not just going to stay in that home and butt heads and argue and keep calling the police years upon years upon years, not even divorced, owing the lawyer money, cops showing up here and there intermittently, me buying all this body cam footage that keeps appearing and us watching the demise of this marriage very sadly. But this will give some progress. You know, something will have to move forward. Some decisions will have to be made. I don't know if Kim and Croy will have the help of lawyers. I don't know if Kim and Croy will have any help from lawyers to actually create these affidavits they need to create and these demands or not. I guess we'll see by January 31st what actually happens, what gets submitted. Hopefully this danger doesn't ramp up as January 31st approaches. Let's leave off today with Isaiah 28:16, a very wise verse. Very comforting. I read it this morning. Therefore, the Lord God says this, listen carefully. I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for the secure foundation firmly placed. He who believes, who trusts in, relies on, and adheres to that stone will not be disturbed or give way in sudden panic. Certain translations say he will not be put to shame. And isn't that a good word to rely on? There could be a lot of shame in, you know, personal problems, making it so far, they're not being resolved. They end up on body cam videos. Maybe they end up in bankruptcy court, divorce court. Like they say, time and chance happens to all people, but we don't have to be put to shame. And that's one thing that I hope Kim and Croy can rely upon. Who cares if the house has to be sold to get all the debt paid off? Who cares if you get to buy some cute little house or even an apartment or a condo or what have you? You know, Kim started off with her condo. Maybe she can go back to a condo. It's not about living in some mansion and being all fancy. It's about if the marriage could be saved, I wish it could be saved, but hopefully they can rely on their faith. I know Croy, I believe is a Christian. Kim talked about his parents being super Christians, as she said on that one 911 call. <sighs> Wouldn't hurt for her to turn into a super Christian right about now. Not annoying, not holier than thou. I don't mean that. I mean to keep the love of Christ in her heart, let it fill her up and let her let all these material things go if they're just fighting over physical things. It's one thing to fight for the marriage, fight for love, fight for the parenthood. It's another thing to just quibble over this and that and what was mine and what is yours and who worked harder and blah, blah, blah. That part doesn't matter. But again, I wish them the best. Stay tuned. Hopefully it won't take 30 days to get this body cam footage. Maybe it'll come sooner and we'll watch it all together and we'll see what happens with this case. Thanks for watching.